Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. Let's start the test with part one. Part one. You will hear a telephone conversation between a student and someone who works at the university. You have 30 seconds to look at questions one to four. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to four. You're through to Victoria University IT department. How may I help you? Yes, I've been locked out of my email account. Can you help? Are you a student or an employee? Both. I work at the university union. In the cafe? All right. Which email account is giving you trouble? Is it your personal account? Actually, it's for a society. A society? Right. Which society is it then? It's the rugby club. I'm the vice president. That's good because I can only give information on the account to one of the officers of the society. Let me see. Mm, could you confirm your name? Rakesh Singh. How do you spell that? R A K E S H. I mean the last name. Is it just sing as in sing a song of sixpence? No, it's sing with an H on the end. Oh, right. That's what I thought. They have your name spelled incorrectly in the system. Oh, dear. Will that be a problem? I can fix it. What exactly was the trouble you were having with the rugby club email account? Well, I was trying to log in just now, and it said I had the wrong password. Hmm, that's not good. You are going to hear more of the telephone conversation between a student and someone who works at the university. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 5 to 10. What password were you using? Offside, with an exclamation mark at the end. Offside starting with an O? That's the password I was given. I was just elected to be an officer of the club. Good for you. Unfortunately, that's not the password we have in the system. It's offside with an exclamation mark at the end, but it starts with a naught instead of an O. A naught? A zero? Oh, OK. Yeah, I can see that it could be an O or a zero. Don't worry. It happens all the time. We can reset your password now. Great. Hmm. Can we make it tackle? <laughs> I see what you did there. Tackle is a great starting point, but you're forgetting the university policy on passwords. To be secure, a password must include at least one number and at least one special symbol, such as a question mark or a dollar sign. OK, OK. What if we make it tackle, but with an asterisk instead of a K, and a 1 instead of the L? Um, right. So, the new password is T. A C asterisk one E. Will that do? It's all changed in our system. You'll want to make sure to write it down. I'm making a note of it now. By the way, would you be the ones to help if we were having trouble with the club's website? That's right. What's the issue with the website? Well, it's not a problem exactly. 
We've got some photos from some of our matches and a few clips that we filmed. Is it possible to put these on the website? Of course. That's a great way to show what the club has been up to. Mm, how long are these films? They're not films, just some short videos from practice and some key moments from our matches. I think the longest video is maybe three minutes, a bit less than that. You'll want to compress the videos before posting, as there are size limits. The university will not allow videos that are more than 50 megabytes on our website. 50 megabytes? That's not very much. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you shouldn't have a problem with a video that's three minutes or less. I'd say that you could probably even shoot the video in high definition, and once it's compressed, it should fit within the size limits. I suppose you follow international rugby. Doesn't everyone? Who do you support? Fiji. I think we might have a chance in the next World Cup. How about you? England, of course. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one. Now move to part two. Part two. You will hear part of a welcome speech introducing international students to the town where they have just arrived. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. I know many of you have travelled quite a long way to join us to continue your studies here in Shipsbury. So you'll want to get acquainted with our town and find your way around, as Shipsbury will be your home for the next few months. Here in the Student Centre, we're just across London Road from the college's main campus, right on the corner of the High Street. If you haven't done so already, you'll need to register with the police. Be sure to take your passports and your letter from the college with you and present yourself at the police station, which is a block away from the college at the corner of Park Lane and Sheep Street. Uh, be sure to check out Victoria Park, which is half a block east of the police station. The park extends to the north, past London Road and as far as Church Lane. You're likely to spend quite a bit of time in the public library, which is located on Park Lane between the police station and the park. Just north of the public library is the Park Hotel. This is the finest hotel for miles around and does a very tasty, very traditional English tea on Sunday afternoons. You'll need to book ahead and it's well worth the price. You are going to hear more of the welcome speech introducing international students to the town where they have just arrived. You have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. Straight across from the library, you'll find the town hall. There's a lovely atrium there and the cafe serves some very tasty soups and sandwiches. Well worth checking out. 
The town hall was rebuilt in the 1960s, in the same style as the supermarket, which is just beside the police station in Park Lane. That part of Shipsbury was hit by a bomb during the Second World War, so some rebuilding was necessary. You'll find, though, that the rest of the town centre retains its charming, historic character, including the post office, which is opposite the Park Hotel. Coming down Sheep Street, you'll find St Mary's Church at the corner of Church Lane. The church is across the road from the primary school, which is between Sheep Street and the park. On the last Sunday of the month, you can climb the church tower, which gives a lovely view of the river a block away. On your way back to the student centre, come along Church Lane. At the intersection with the high street, you'll find Wok and Roll, our most popular Chinese takeaway, and with good reason. The food is delicious, and the prices are terribly affordable. Be sure to place your orders before 7pm on a Saturday night, or you'll be out of luck. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Now move to part three. Part three. You will hear two students discussing their ecology reports. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi Robert, what are you up to this afternoon? Oh, hi Millie. I'm just working on my recycling report for our ecology class. Oh cool, I'm having a lot of fun with mine. Ecology is my favourite module. Oh, I wish I could say the same. I mean, I care about the environment and all and climate change is really something we should all be concerned about. But the lecturer is so dull. He can be a bit dry. What's the focus of your report? I'm looking at the statistics for recycling collected by the local council for the last three years. <laughs> it's so boring. But there are some interesting facts in there, I suppose. Sounds interesting. I'm also looking at the local area. My report is all about what Greenwood Council are doing to increase the amount of rubbish that is recycled. Right. Well, it seems like we're always recycling more and more, but I guess it's never enough. You're right. We can always do more. What's really interesting is how the council has got us recycling more. I've spoken to several councillors and local activists who have done a lot on this issue, and the politicians and activists agree. The biggest reason for the increase in recycling is the change in the size of our rubbish bins. You remember, last year, Everyone was complaining when we got new rubbish bins, and they were almost half the size of the old ones. And they reduced the rubbish collection to once a fortnight. Yes, but the recycling bins were still the big old size, and they kept collecting the recycling once a week. This made it easier to recycle, and, more importantly, it forced people to recycle more. There simply wasn't enough room in their bin for all that rubbish. Anything that could be recycled needs to go into the recycling bin now, so we're all recycling more. That's one way to get a result. Before you hear the rest of the recording, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. So, tell me about your research. What have you found out about how much we're recycling here in Greenwood? Well, Greenwood residents recycled 31% of all our waste last year. Waste meaning rubbish plus recycling. That's up from 27% three years ago. So, a rise of 4%. That's brilliant. It is. And it's even better because the overall amount of waste increased as well by 10%. So we've recycled a greater share of a larger total. That means less rubbish going to landfill. What did you learn about what people are recycling? Any big changes there? That was the surprising thing. People aren't recycling nearly as much paper and card as they used to. The rate of paper and card recycling has dropped by 6%. I didn't expect that. You'd think that people are being a bit better about not putting packaging and old papers in the rubbish, but recycling it instead. Do you have any research about why the figure is down? Hmm, now this is something. You know how we used to recycle all our old newspapers and magazines? I can't remember the last time I bought a newspaper or a magazine. But you still read them, don't you? I guess. Well, actually you're right. I do read newspapers and magazines, only I read them online. That's just it. People are reading their periodicals on computers and tablets instead of buying a physical copy. If you never buy a printed newspaper or magazine, you needn't recycle it. Wow, I wouldn't have thought of that. The other big change in the recycling figures is that we are recycling a fair bit more plastic than we did before. In the last three years, the figure for plastic recycling has increased by a quarter. They think that people here in Greenwood are recycling more plastic because of all the attention to recycling, rather than just binning things like drinks containers and carrier bags. The local council did a big campaign around this last year, with lots of posters in supermarkets. They say it was a huge success. Who exactly is they? Who did you talk to as part of your research? You know I volunteered at the recycling centre last semester, so I dropped by there talked to some of the guys, and they put me on to a lady from the council who gave me all the figures. Oh, she did go on a bit, but yeah, she was really helpful. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three. Now move to part four. Part four. You will hear a lecture about mouse behavior in exercise wheels. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today we're going to consider the results of a recent experiment into the behaviour of wild mice. Now, if you've ever kept a mouse, or a hamster, or guinea pig as a pet, you probably kept it in a cage with a water bottle, a food dish and an exercise wheel. Small pets like mice will spend a lot of time running inside the exercise wheel, making it spin round and round. And if you've ever seen a pet mouse running in an exercise wheel, you've no doubt seen them smiling and really going for it. You can't help getting the idea that mice enjoy running in exercise wheels. But is this actually the case? And what can science tell us? Traditionally, 
there were two explanations for why mice in captivity, whether kept as pets or for research, would run in exercise wheels. First, there's the possibility that the mice are running to relieve the stress of being confined. This means that there is a psychological benefit or reward from running in the exercise wheel. The other explanation is that running in the exercise wheel is a stereotyped behaviour, an activity that is repetitive, that is repeated in the same way countless times without ever achieving any goal. Until recently, the common view among scientists was that all this running in exercise wheels by mice in cages was a stereotyped behaviour. To understand the prevalence of this view, let's consider the three main criteria that define a stereotyped behaviour. The behaviour is observed only in animals in cages, not in the wild. Second, the behaviour is repetitive, invariably the same, with no apparent purpose or benefit. And finally, the behaviour does not depend on external stimuli such as reward or is only partially dependent on such stimuli. The traditional understanding then is that captive mice run on exercise wheels even when there is no external stimulus because it's a stereotyped behaviour. This would be similar to when people are confined to a small room or prisoners to a cell and they will pace back and forth for no reason. That pacing is also a stereotyped behaviour. However, this understanding depends on the idea that the mice are running in the wheels because they are confined and that they wouldn't run in the wheels in other circumstances. A team of Dutch scientists set out to investigate whether this was actually the case by setting up exercise wheels outside. They placed exercise wheels in small boxes so that larger animals could not interfere and the boxes were placed in two areas that were populated by wild mice and other small animals. An urban area, one of the professor's back gardens, and a rural area, a remote dune that could not be accessed by the public. Cameras recorded all visits to the exercise wheels over a period of three years. Most importantly, there was food in the box, but the animals could eat the food whether or not they chose to run in the exercise wheel. In the course of the experiment, the running wheels were used more than 12,000 times by animals including mice, frogs, slugs and birds. Mice, however, accounted for 88% of the wheel running. For the final months of the experiment, the researchers removed food from the boxes, leading to a drop in the frequency of visits to the boxes. Even so, Visits where the wheel was used increased by 42%. This suggests that mice visited the boxes solely to run on the exercise wheel. As a result, the scientists concluded that running in an exercise wheel is inherently rewarding to wild mice. This research has proven that wheel running is not a stereotyped behaviour, as it was observed in wild mice. Effectively, this means that we are left with the first theory of why mice run in wheels. There is a fundamental benefit or goal to the activity, that is, the activity is psychologically rewarding. What's the reward to mice in running in a wheel? The answer is simple. They run because they enjoy it. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part four.